What if I told you that stocks were rising despite the fact that investors were selling? How could it be possible? Well, let's take a look. Investors have actually been selling equities. They've been holding cash, a lot of it. But the US stock market has risen quite a bit this year. So who exactly bought the shares? Well, it seems that stock buybacks are one major reason why the market has risen. Over $1 trillion of stock buybacks took place in 2018 alone, preventing stocks from entering a bear market for a prolonged period. What will 2019 19 look like you came here for the truth so let me unveil that for you today we are going to look at what's happening with stock buybacks i'm going to give you a breakdown of exactly what has occurred this far into 2019 so let's begin by taking a look at the markets this is the S&P 500 and you can see how it has performed throughout the years going back to 1990. And this is in fact one of the best performing years so far. And you can see that it shows you from January 1st. This line right here is January 31st. And this gives us an idea how far it has come. We are referencing what's right in this box, showing us the performance over this period of time it has done very very well so you make this assumption that investors are buying into stocks they're purchasing equities in the s p 500 would make sense right based on this chart but that actually isn't the case so let's dig in a little deeper i briefly mentioned this on a previous video but you can see the bank of america merrill lynch fund manager survey i'll show you two charts smallest overweight in global equity allocation since september of 2016. wait a second we're seeing a massive surge in equities and yet they're actually underweight or at least they're not overweight at this point so what does that mean well they've been purchasing something else Here's another chart that shows us US equity, that's the green line, and it has actually been down throughout the year. Very strange. This just compares some different asset classes throughout 2019 to give you an idea, but I wanted to highlight that green line. US equity is actually down. Very strange if you compare what's happening, the performance in the market right now, and then you see these charts. And here's another one to add to it. Rotation into cash takes allocation to the highest since January of 2009. Biggest overweight cash since January 2009. So near record high in their purchases of cash today, very few are finding themselves overweight in equities. And when you compare it to the other asset classes, the money is clearly not flowing into there. So what is going on? Well, I'm gonna show you a few examples of what is actually happening today. U.S. companies bought back more than $1 trillion of their own shares in 2018, helping to keep afloat a market that turned in an otherwise lackluster performance as the S&P 500 was off more than 6% for the year. However, the propensity of companies to use the trillions in cash they are holding has caused controversy and calls for legislators to limit the practice. And you might have heard about this, that they're going to put something into law, or at least they want to try to to make them get taxed as a result of their buybacks you could say if you like it if you don't that's not the purpose of this video i just want to show you where the money is coming from this article out of market watch has a few good things to say 60 companies in the Russell 3000 announced buybacks worth a total of $106 billion in January, nearly doubling the 43 announcements, totaling $67 billion in buybacks announced in January of last year. So already we're on pace to beat that $1 trillion from 2018. This is a massive buyback frenzy that is happening. Companies are buying back their own shares at such a rapid rapid clip if it continues this way we are going to see them beat that record from the previous year this acceleration in the pace of share repurchases is occurring even as it comes under greater scrutiny by washington and it goes on 
at the very bottom, it talks about the fact that they thought 2019, this wouldn't happen. You wouldn't have this much money flowing in with the stock buybacks. But of course, that's not the case. They have continued the practice and in fact accelerated it. And that is right here out of this Market Watch article. S&P 500 buybacks as a percentage of earnings. And you can see, just like in the previous cycle, what had happened. We see it going to a record high, and then we have a recession. Again, it starts to rise, and then we have a recession. Now, nobody really knows what's going to happen, and I don't believe it's necessarily an indicator of a recession coming, but just to show you, to give you an idea of what happened through the last cycle, okay? That just shows us that data. We're going to look at the buybacks by sector and financials tops the list. This is specifically right now in the past week, just to give you an idea financials on the top materials, staples, and then tech underneath that. I wanted to give you this because I think it's important to document everything, but I'll move on. I did a search for stock buybacks in 2019, and I wanted to see which companies are doing the buybacks right now, and I was surprised to see so many companies in this list, my goodness. Just take a look. This is right at the top of the search. Yelp jumps after posting earnings and increasing share buyback, and it goes on. Cisco shares rise on better than expected revenue and earnings, but if you look further into the article, it talks about the stock buyback program. We go down further, Activision shares advance as buyback and so on. It talks about the issues that they want to bring in, potentially have some sort of tax on share buybacks. SoftBank shares surge more than 17%, talking about the repurchase of 100 million shares. And we can go on and on and on. There are so many. If you go to the next pages, you'll see that for yourself. But regardless, this tells us what's happening here. It's very clear to me. I know it's clear to you as well. Share repurchases are the number one factor today, at least publicly, that information we know. And so let's move on to the next one. Having a quote dovish Fed also helps to ease the tensions in the markets because they know that they don't have to worry anymore. But there's something that's happening and it's a schedule that's in place today. Who knows what will happen tomorrow? But this is the schedule as of right now. You're seeing 2019's QT schedule from the Federal Reserve. And you'll just look at this to see all the different maturities, how much is going to be allowed to mature. This is the the way that it works for their different assets that they hold showing us in February we got a couple big days in there March and so on you just go through the list and see it for yourself I think it's important to note what the Federal Reserve is doing, what they're up to at any given time. It's extremely important as far as I'm considered. It's critical to follow their every action, even with their forward guidance, the words that they choose in all of their statements, and then see the actions as they actually play out. This is their QT schedule. Whether or not they're going to decrease it, we'll see. They want to be able to taper off from that. They don't want to cause any disruption, supposedly. However, the economy is totally fine, and yet simultaneously, they're going to do this QT tapering. So there's really some incongruencies here, but I just wanted to mention that. Another thing we have to talk about is the fact that not just China, but central banks today are printing just as much money, it seems, as they were doing last year and the year before. It looks like they've printed a considerable amount of money all the way from late 2018 up until present day, just in this short period of time. I showed you the details. If you want to know more about that, I just did a video yesterday. Check it out on my channel and you can take a look for yourself. This one specifically talks about China. I actually give you all the charts and the details of that. The title of the video is China Central Bank just injected record amount of money into the markets to prevent collapse. So you can see that for yourself if you're interested. Interested. When you have trillions of dollars that move into a certain market, of course, it's going to have an effect. Even if that market is, let's say, worth trillions of dollars on its own, suddenly we've got a big wave and it doesn't just come from one injection. People pointed out in this video, oh, it's only a few billion dollars. But what it does is it basically opens the floodgates so that others start to follow along. Well, if the Fed is going to be dovish, 
then I can invest too. People don't realize that compound effect that's really happening, but of course, they want to remain the, with their heads in the sand. That's just the way it happens to be. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, you can support me by putting that thumbs up. Click the like button to support this channel. Thank you very much for that. And if you want the financial education that you were not taught in school, these two books have everything that you need from the foundation, the history, how to profit, your financial education in two books. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audiobook version, you can get that at themoneygps.com.